trying to venture into the north is a suicide mission. There are tanks and snipers positioned, and anyone trying to get there um, is, is basically killed. Uh, as you just mentioned, aid trucks are not getting in either. They are intentionally stopped, and uh, it's an intentional starvation, basically. Um, I was primarily in the south, in Rafah. Uh, I was able to go to Khan Yunus and to Nusayrat and a few other places in the middle region, but that uh, became increasingly more dangerous. I want to say that um, the reality on the ground is infinitely worse than the worst videos and photos that we're seeing in the West. There is a, you know, beyond people being buried alive en masse in their homes, uh, their bodies being shredded to pieces, uh, these kinds of videos and images that people are seeing. Beyond that, there is this daily massive degradation of life. It is a total denigration of a whole society that was, that was once high functioning and proud and has basically been reduced to the most primal of ambitions. Uh, you know, being able to get enough water for the day or, or flour to bake bread. And this is even in Rafah. And the people in Rafah will tell you that they feel privileged because they're not starving to death while their families in the north, uh, the ones that they can reach, because Israel has basically cut off, uh, you know, 99% of communication. What remains are basically communications by people who are, have, you know, set up some ingenious ways to, to keep uh, internet in, in the north. But most people in the north have no idea what's happening. As a matter of fact, at one point, um, I'm sure you all know Bisan Ode, who, who is on uh, uh, Facebook. Um, she, she explained to me, um, she often goes up to the border uh, between Khan Yunus and the, the middle area in the north where, uh, where you can't go beyond. And she explained to me that an aid truck um, that sort of pushed its way through but was eventually fired on had people ca came up and, and, and ran up thinking that the war was over and, and people were returning to the north. So most people in the north are in total darkness and, and hunger and really have no, uh, n no way of communicating, no way of figuring out where to get food. And it's, you know, what we're hearing on the ground is surreal. I mean, it's dystopic. What's, what I witnessed personally in Rafah and in some of the middle areas is incomprehensible. And I, I will call it a holocaust, and I don't use that word lightly, but it is absolutely that. Uh, Susan, the stories I, will, I, will, I heard I will... from people are... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah. No, Susan, I wanted to ask you, you write in your, in your article, at some point the, in, the indignity of filth is unescapable. At some point, you just wait for death, even as you wait for a ceasefire. But people don't know what they will do after a ceasefire. Could you talk about that? Even if there is a ceasefire, the, yeah. the, the level of destruction that the people face now in terms of, of being able to rebuild uh, their country. I mean, that's how much people have been reduced. I mean, the ceiling of their hope at this point is for the bombs to stop. And, you know, they, everybody wants to go back. Um, they talk about pitching a tent on their homes and figuring things out. But a lot of people are trying to leave. Uh, there is a, a brain drain, basically. Those who can afford it, those who can raise the money, those who are able to get jobs elsewhere, who have uh, professional skills, are, are trying to leave. They have children. This, all the schools have been destroyed. College students have nowhere to go. Um, there is, it, it, it's, you know, what's happening to people 
uh, isn't just this death and dismemberment and hunger. It is, it's a total denigration of their personhood, of their, of their whole society. There are no universities left. Israel intentionally bombed schools and blew them up presumably to ensure that rebuilding could not take place, that reestablishing a society cannot take place without the infrastructure of education, of health care, uh, and, 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 and basically foundational structures for, uh, for buildings. Susan, I wanted to follow up on what you said about a holocaust, and you also use the term genocide. And you say genocide isn't just mass murder. It's intentional erasure. Can you take that from there? Exactly. I mean, one of the, like I said, one of the things that Israel has, has uh, been keen to do in Gaza is to erase remnants of people's lives. So you have on an individual level homes complete with memories and photos and uh, and all the things of living. And, and, and I'm sure you know Palestinians typically live in multi-generational homes. We're not a mobile society. And so these homes have several generations of the same family completely wiped out. On a societal level, you have uh, Israel has targeted uh, places of worship, mosques, uh, ancient churches, ancient mosques. They've targeted m the museums, uh, cultural centers, any place that uh, uh, libraries, any place that that has a, has records of people's lives, has remnants and traces of their of their roots in the land, have been intentionally wiped away. Um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's really uh, frustrating for, for us to read Western media talk about, you know, Israel's targeting Hamas and whatnot. They're not. This is always, and when you're on the ground, you understand this has always been about displacing Palestinians, taking their place, and wiping them off the map. That has been Israel's stated goal. I mean, even in this instance and before, uh, in, in 1948, it has always been their aim to, uh, to, to, to destroy us, remove us, kill us, and, and take our place. Uh, and, and that's what's happening now in, in Gaza. It's what happened in 1948, in 1967. Um, and, uh, and, and every new Nakba, every new escalation is greater than the one before. And here we now arrive at a moment of genocide and Holocaust because the world has allowed Israel to, to act with such barbarity, with impunity. Yeah, 